All right, so our next topic is the ratio test. So the ratio test is stated here as a theorem. Again, the assumption is that we're dealing with a positive sequence, so our series is summing positive terms. We aren't alternating signs at all. And the ratio test gives you a, a simple thing to consider. It says just look at the ratio of consecutive terms in your sequence, a n plus 1 over a n. Um, if that limit comes out to a value which is less than 1, you know your sequence converges. If it's bigger than 1, the series diverges. Sorry, I said sequence, meant series. Um, so series converges if L is less than 1, diverges if L is bigger than 1, and if you actually get 1 on the nose, then the ratio test fails, right? Uh, so the test tells you nothing if that limit happens to be equal to 1. Um, so one of the things that's kind of important now that we're sort of building up our arsenal of tests, right? We have geometric series now, we have P-series, uh, telescoping series. I mean, there's not really a test there, you just have to recognize that it's telescoping. Um, we have the integral test, we have comparison test, limit comparison, now ratio, soon root, right? Um, solving problems involving sequences and series is all about choosing the right tool for the job. And it's about doing enough problems that you're able to recognize what the right tool is going to be. Okay? So, for example, the ratio test is not the right tool for a P-series, right? If you think about a P-series, right, uh, if my an is, is 1 over n to the P, right, and if I was looking at, well, what do I get for an plus 1 over a n, well, I'm going to get n over n plus 1 to the p after a bit of simplifying, right? Uh, and that's going to go to 1 in the limit, right? So the ratio test is useless for p-series, but that's okay because we already know how to handle p-series, right? We just have to look at that value of p. Is it bigger than 1 or is it less than 1, right? Um, so the ratio test is not helpful for p-series, but it is helpful for a lot of other series. Um, in particular, the ratio test definitely takes care of geometric series, right? Um, think about a geometric series. If a n looks like r to the n, right? Well, then a n plus 1 over a n is going to be um, r to the n plus 1 over r to the n, which is r. Um, and as we already know, geometric series converges precisely, um, for, for positive r, converges precisely when r is less than 1. Okay? We can see that again with the ratio test. In fact, the way you actually understand why the ratio test works, the way you would prove it is is using something that is sort of based on the geometric series test. It's realizing that, okay, um, you know, what is, what are we really saying when we say that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n is equal to L? Well, this sort of means that you know, a n plus 1 is approximately a n times L for large n, right? And if you think about, well, okay, so this is, I mean, this is not a proof by any means, but just think of it this way. So, so a n plus 1 is just L times a n, right? And then a n plus 2 would be L times a n plus 1 would be L times L times a n. Uh, and you can sort of, you know, get from here to say, well, that means that, you know, a n plus k is like a n times L to the k, right? Um, and so then you sort of think about what happens as k gets really large, and you say, well, this is more or less behaving like a geometric series, right? It's not exactly a geometric series because you know, this is only an approximation, it's not exact, but with the definition of the limit, right, if you bring in, you know, the epsilon definition of the limit, we can say for a large enough n, we can make the difference between this ratio and L, 
less than epsilon, we can work out what that means, and we can make this precise, right? So this is one way to think about why the ratio test works. It's essentially taking much more general series and, in a sense, comparing them to a geometric series, right? Um, but using the machinery of a limit to set up that comparison. Okay? Um, so that's one way to understand why it works. Certainly not a proof, but it gives you some idea of the concept. Um, with that under our belts, we'll move on and we'll look at some examples.